Hi, in this video, I'll be covering how to create a risk assessment chart in Google Sheets. Do you like risk? Most people would say, no, as long as it's a calculated risk. But do you know what is risky? Not identifying those risks and putting some rating on them. This is especially true if you're in an organization and project managing activities. Don't be that guy or gal that does that. Let your peoples know what kind of risk may happen to your projects. What's better is if you can categorize it, like with low, medium, and high. What you need is a risk assessment matrix, and a nice free tool to create this is on, look no further, Google Sheets. Let's check it out. So we have our table here, in columns B to E, and in starting column G, we have our matrix here. So here, the nice thing about this is I can change this. Instead of having high and low, maybe I change this to medium, and you can see that it changes the risk here to high. Also gives you a red color. And you notice that it changed it here. So if I decided to like extend this out and create other types of risk, you can see I've got 25 here because I've added that. And also I have that frozen there so I can, I can still see the titles here. And if you wanted this clean, nice look, I'll show you at the end how we can get rid of the, all the other grid lines and make this nice and clean. So let's get started. So I copied some of the uh, other parts of the table here just to start. We don't need to start from fresh from a new, but let me put in risk here. And I'm going to copy the formatting from here to there. So click the formatting bar, click it over here. I've got my table here. And here, this is where we got that hairy formula. And that's to indicate if I got a probability of high and then an impact of low, it should be right here where a yellow color would be medium. And because we're, we're assuming like in our previous sheet, the rows down here, these three are green. Right in this middle, this diagonal is going to be yellow, and here it's red. This part, this color and shading is not dynamic, the numbers are, but in the table, this is where it becomes dynamic. Now, it's basically this big, hairy formula. Let's pull this down here. It's this big formula. I'm going to copy this over, and I'll put this in the description, so you, if you're following along, you can just take that formula. You don't have to type it all in and um, do it yourself. But here, I'm just going to copy it. We need to adjust it where it's referencing the right cells, right? So if you see C9 and D9 here, it's not right. It's, this should be C12 and D12, but look at all this that we have to change. So an easy way to do this, I'm gonna copy that and put it into Notepad. I'll paste it into Notepad, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I'll just go under Edit, uh, Replace. And anywhere that says C9, I'll replace with C12. So C9, and then that gets replaced with uh, C12, replace all. And I gotta do the same thing here where it references D9 because I wanna do it for D12. So I'll just say D here, and change that to D12, replace all, and then close this, and let's Control A to copy, Control, Control A to select, Control C to copy. Let's close this, and I'll go back into this cell, delete that, Control V to paste. I can see I have my C12 and D12 everywhere here. Press Enter, and now we have it auto-filled. Google Sheets is nice enough to auto-fill this all the way down. You can see that if I click the check mark or press Control Enter, it will auto fill that formula down. You see C13 and D13. And it was really nice to do that. So I don't have to like double click the fill handle down here to bring it down. I can just add more if I wanted to and have that select go down. And I've got different risks I can put there. And it's got these different formulas. Now I can change this to high and then maybe make this medium. I have to spell it all out medium. And at least I've, I've got that. So I can control C to copy, put some over here, maybe put some over here. Put some over here. Uh, make 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 this high. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. So I've got a different different range of risks here. How do I incorporate the color? That's going to be conditional formatting. So what I can do is I can select this, go under Format, and under Conditional Formatting, if I see if the text contains low, I'll make that green. Click Done. Let's add another rule. And if text contains, or maybe I should have used text exactly, but let's say it's consistent. Text contains medium, then we want to have that cell color yellow. Click done. You can see that it's done that here. Let's click the last one. If text contains high, then we're going to make the cell color red. Let's do that red here. Done. Click done. And now we've got that all set. So if I increase this, you can see that I've got a bunch of lows. You can also see that now it's kind of gone off screen. And the way that we can rectify that, I'll rectify that later, but let's create our little table here. 
and I'll, I'll put probability here, but I don't need to type it. I'm just going to control C to copy, go to formula bar, control C to copy, control V to paste, impact, control C to copy, and up here, control V to paste. Let's make this into the middle and I'll merge that. And the merge is this one, this icon here, and we'll merge all of them and center towards the middle. And let's merge this one horizontally and center that towards the middle here. And now we got to make our formulas. I'm going to put the formula here and I'll copy it to the rest of the cells. And the way that we designed the formula, when we copy it over, it's going to adjust the cell reference. So for low, I'm going to type equals count. So I want, because I want to be able to count how many high and low medium combinations are there. And I'm going to use the count ifs function, count ifs, because I have, I have multiple criteria to count. I need to count how many are in the probability of high and also how many in the probability, how many in the impact of low. So my first criteria is going to be in column C and I want to match that probability with that. I need to put a dollar sign in front of the C's here to make it an absolute uh, cell reference range because I don't want it to change to column D or E or F when I copy it over. I need to make sure that it is in column F but the rows are going to change to F3 to F4, F5 when I copy it down. So, so the dollar sign needs to be in front of the F, right? And so that's one criteria. The next criteria, and you can see that there's a question mark here, and you can see there's a carrot here. So if you ever need help on these functions, you click that carrot down and you can get some information and click learn more to learn about that. I'm going to close this because I don't need this here. Now the next criteria that I want in my count ifs, oh, I, this has to be S. I forgot to put the count ifs here. Now you see that's the correct function, not the count if with the no without the s. So you can see that there is more information here, right? So let's close this. My next criteria is column D, and I want to make sure I have the dollar sign in front of both the D's here. And then comma, what am I going to? What criteria do I want? I want this. I want this low criteria. Click on that, and and when I copy things over, I want to make sure it stays on row two but column G can go to column H and I. So put the dollar sign in front of the two and then close parentheses, press enter. You can see now it's counted. It's auto filled down for the suggestion. Let's take that, let's accept that. And we'll look at G3 and see if it copied it down correctly. See, so it did. C stayed the same, D stayed the same. The criteria is F4 now. And for the second criteria, it, it hasn't changed because we're still in that same column G. Right? So I'm going to take this, select that, and just kind of move it over. And now you'll see that it's copied it over quite nicely. We have this 36 number because there are 36 that are low medium. Right? We have 36 low medium. If I select that, there's going to be a count here of 35. And there's probably one more here where it's a low medium right here. So that makes 36. So now all my counts are correct. And all I need to do is do formatting here now. So I can just format this. I can select this, maybe select that cell, select that cell, and use the control button to select everything. Press on the borders and have that border set. That's too far along. It should probably have, should have been at uh, G1 instead of F1. So I will take that and unmerge that, unmerge that, move that over, control X to copy, control C, V to paste. And here we'll just merge it here. This is where it needs to be merged. And that's set there. And the rest is just manual here. We, we've got press the control key, select those bottom cells. That's going to be a color of green. The middle cell, cells here, press control, select that cell, select that cell. That's going to be a color of yellow. And the top ones here, control button, press those, select those cells. That's going to be red. And now anytime I change this, let's say, like for example, I, maybe I want to change everything. Let's test this. If I change everything from high to high, from risk one to risk eight, let's do that. You can see everything goes high. You can see everything's disappeared. We've got nine highs and 35 mediums there. And so that's how we can have a risk assessment table and have it correspond to a risk assessment chart where it just counts it and you can visually see it in a more simpler view here. Now, as I mentioned before, maybe you have you have a lot of risks and you want to scroll and you want to keep that there and have uh, the row titles kind of stay static. What we can do is I'm going to remove some rows here. I'll remove the rows here. Let's select from seven, press the shift key to 10, uh, right click and delete row seven to 10 and select this row here and go under view, go to freeze, 
and freeze up to row seven. So now when I scroll down, you can see it stays there and everything is gone. And as I mentioned, you probably didn't want to see these grid lines. So we can go to view and click on show and get rid of the grid lines. And now it's kind of nice and neat. And now it looks a lot cleaner. I hope you found this way of creating a tool to analyze your risk easy to make. Having it in a table format and using the color scheme of red, yellow, and green helps to visually give you a quick snapshot of what's critical versus non-critical. And it can all be done quickly and easily. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end. You're still here? Well, then I got a joke for you. What happens when a frog parks illegally? It gets towed. <laughs>